See, I'm a second too late for that one. Usually I get their picture and I'm out before they even know they were photographed. But the most interesting pictures are the ones that are right on the brink of realizing what's going on. And they're not sure if they want to play into it or if they're pissed off. They're sort of exploring their own feelings about it. God, look at that guy. Look at that guy on the on the lavender scooter. Oh my god, I want to go catch him. Hold on, hold on. Wait for it. Oh, he's gonna pass right here. Here he comes. Oh, he got some more. Oh, he's got gas. Oh my god. <laughs> That's gonna be a sweetheart. <laughs> you know, when you first start shooting, you're you, you're like exploring your own feelings, like, oh my god, I might hurt their feelings, or uh, you know, should I get out and ask permission? And uh, but the more you do it, the more you realize it's all about the image. You're not really stealing anybody's soul, and uh, the whole thing about the feelings, it doesn't really matter. You're. Uh, they're involuntary subjects in uh, documentation of the city. It's, they kind of signed up when they got on the sidewalk. My name is Lev Rukin, and I am a photographer. Was born and raised in uh, St. Petersburg, at the time Leningrad, Russia. Um, I was born to two artists, my mom uh, made stained glass and uh, did jewelry design. And my father was a prominent uh, nonconformist artist, an abstract painter. My father was killed when I was five by the KGB because of his, uh, because of his artwork. And we moved to the United States. My mom fled with four kids and we moved to Texas. Um, and in my attempt to sort of assimilate, uh, I think I became somewhat conservative and uh, wanted nothing to do with artwork because uh, art and that, that lifestyle, I think soon became to represent the demise of my father. I bought a motorcycle and I bought a camera strictly to sort of just illustrate uh, what I wanted to do, which was to go around the world on my motorcycle and uh, collect interviews with completely random people. I began to run into, totally uh, serendipitously, into people that knew my father, other Russian dissident artists living in exile, you know, who told me stories and uh, I was able to piece together like a jigsaw puzzle, a, a picture of my father and his life, his struggle, and ultimately his death. When I had come back from my trip, my, my whole life had changed. All my, my entire spectrum of uh, values had shifted. And at that point, I had become an artist. I had an exhibition in Vladivostok of my photography. And, um, and at that point, I had uh, come to terms and uh, gained a solid understanding of who my father was and his struggle. And I no longer pushed myself away from it. My daughter, she's named after my father, Zhenya. She grew up with a camera sort of in her face or constantly present. I uh, documented her life and her experience and her learning of uh, the world around her. I set up a camera on a tripod and I said, uh, why don't we do a little series of people waiting for buses? I gave her the remote control and we set it up and you know, she, we'd pull up to a bus stop. She would you know, snap a little photo and uh, we would just drive off and we'd have a good laugh about it. So Zhenya essentially uh, started this whole series of uh, drive-by shootings. I really saw how tremendously beautiful and short-lived this theater taking place on the sidewalks really is. That became a foray into sort of a different documentation of Los Angeles.
It's a, a magnificent setting for an artist. Los Angeles is an extremely expansive city and metropolis. It is as great or as little as you want it to be. You create it as opposed to the other way around. You define the city to what you want it to be. It fascinates me to see the swirl of different ethnicities and different cultures and different art. I speed read their story and see if there's anything that I can document about it. Is there something about their story that I can portray to the rest of the world? There's great stories being told everywhere. Hopefully, if you're really a true artist, you're doing what you want. I think uh, my challenge at this point is still the struggle for me to actually make art because it's still so tainted with fear. It was my father's art that got him killed. So a great part of me still has to overcome that. There's a story of uh, some sculptor who had a dry spell for a long time and uh, just couldn't create anything. And then one day he finally got a vision and immediately started uh, sculpting, started making this piece. It was a colossal work. He locked himself in the studio and he just slaved away at this piece. He would only come out uh, once every three days or so to get something to eat. The most alive he had ever been. He was on fire. And then one day, I think it was the day he was gonna unveil the piece, he was uh, adding the final little touches to the piece when something went wrong. With the base or with the way it was propped up, uh, something went wrong and the sculpture toppled over. It crushed him to death before crumbling into a million pieces. Nobody ever saw the piece, but he died uh, in sheer joy. His dream was the death of him. But I think that was Bukowski too, who said, uh, find what you love and let it kill you. Man, as soon as you get the idea, you know, create it, bring it into existence. You are the defender of what you envision. There's nobody else. Nobody else that'll make that happen.